Sometimes you read a story or watch a movie and the characters and the story stay with you forever. Has that ever happened to you? It might have been a story from your third grade textbook, but the story still remains with you. The power of storytelling is incredible. Actually, everyone, all of us can write a story, tell a story through any art form, but only a few can actually capture our imagination. But one such story that captured my attention and my imagination was this story called The Man Called Oaf by Frederick Backman. It's a story about this 60-year-old Swedish man who lives a normal mundane life. In fact, he loves the mundane. He loves every day to be the same. He does not like changes in his life. He, and he is very comfortable with the mundane. It's a heartwarming story that I have read. Every chapter brings you different emotions. I was crying and laughing at the same time. That's the magic of great writing or great storytelling. To make the readers feel the magic even in the most ordinary circumstances. Some characters and some stories are will forever remain etched in our brains. But you know the best part about Ov is that he does not appear to be just another fictional character from some uh, from a book from somebody's head but rather he appears to be a flesh and blood human being who has desires who cries when he is sad who laughs when he is happy who is angry so that's the thing about great storytelling i think a story or a character speaks to the readers or the audience when it's created from a place of authenticity and honesty we don't necessarily need to watch or read stories about ordinary people like you and me sometimes even watching a period drama can actually make you connected to the gigantic characters that these uh, writers create these directors create uh, for example sometimes we watch these period dramas about kings and about great queens and you know of course we don't relate we might not relate to the grandeur of it you know of course stories of the 20th century stories of the 16th 17th century we of course we won't relate to that but what we relate to is are the human emotions that these characters have because they are human beings at the end of the day and i can i think that's the you know brilliance that's how like the, that's the brilliance of the writer that is the brilliance of the storyteller of the director if it is a movie if it is a novel you know to bring those human emotions out of these characters human emotions are universal so i can even connect to a man in a story from the 16th century honestly i feel great storytelling has immense potential and power the tradition of storytelling the traditional way of storytelling has is has actually died a very unnatural death we don't see nowadays like grandmothers or grandfathers sitting with their grandchildren and telling them stories like rarely do we see it especially not uh, in the urban setup and i feel that is a loss that is a very big loss for most of us and that's because storytelling is such a integral part of our culture any culture not only like my you know not only like my culture or any every culture has different stories folk tales and like what not so i feel that of course now if children want they can read it in a book like in a book like grandmother's tales buri hai khado but we barely have the tradition of actually storytelling but storytelling does not only happen through a tale told a novel or even a film if we look around certain pieces of art can tell you a story a piece of garment can tell you a story a recipe of your favorite dish can even tell you a story so i would like to tell you a short story myself now uh an uh, an anecdote so basically in 2018 i went to attend the jaipur literature festival and in one of the sessions um i came across this like there was a book launch by this mother do daughter duo uh, of a cookbook and uh, i really wanted to attend the uh, launch so i went to the session and it was very interesting like for the first time i was at a book launch of a cookbook 
and uh, the interesting part was that the mother was uh, she was almost more than 80 years old and uh, so she was the cook while the daughter was the writer of the book and uh, you know they so through food they were trying to tell their story so when the partition of india happened in 1947 they had to flee from pakistan so they their home their actual home was uh, in pakistan and while they were fleeing because it was like it ha- everything happened so suddenly that they had to leave everything behind even their home everything behind and the only few things that they could carry uh, were uh, a few kitchen utensils and so this cookbook is sort of a tribute to the to their to their past to their heritage and it's such a beautiful amalgamation of both the cultures of uh, her uh, pakistani roots and her indian upbringing and uh, i feel uh, that you know that such a it's such a small thing but you know even through food you can tell such a beautiful story so you see even food can be a source of great storytelling even music for that matter i feel curiosity and perseverance are the only are the most important things actually uh, while creating while telling while writing a great story one does not necessarily need to be shakespeare to write a great story you can start from where you are you can you know i feel great stories come from authenticity and honesty and the stories that are written with honesty and uh, originality those stories are the ones that stand out the most and the readers or the audience relates to the most so yeah that's all that i wanted to say today so thanks for watching till the end mm-hmm.